Hey, aloha gang. Welcome back to another episode of On Fire Fishing Hawaii. This is a fish and dive channel. So if you guys like that kind of stuff, please do me a favor and hit subscribe. Okay, on this episode, I'm just gonna go dive in Kanye Bay, just try to get something for dinner. Um, probably shoot, see what I can shoot, and then I'm gonna actually probably get some kole, and I'm gonna show you the fastest, easiest way to clean any kind of reef fish, like any small reef fish, like maninis, ohole ole, veil veil, uh, kole, and stuff like that. So stick to the end, I'm gonna actually show you a nice catch and cook. So, all right guys, let's go. Holo holo. All right, another beautiful day in Kaneohe Bay. All right, so I'm just cruising over the reef and bam, I, right off the bat, I spot this um, punanu, basically a rock uhu. <laughs> I thought, I can't miss, there's no way I can miss. And then, I don't know, I just shot high, I guess, I don't know, amateur. But, yeah, he got away, but sorry, at least I didn't even wound him, so, you know, hopefully he gets bigger. So what I tend to do is I start on the inside and I'll start to swim over to the ledge. That way I can kind of just perch on the ledge and see if anything big swims by. You know, I kind of just search it, look out, look out, and then when I see like a big school of blacks come in or some other stuff come in, then then I'll make my drop and I'll just hang onto the ledge as they start to come closer and then just wait. And usually when they pass, usually something good passes by with them. As you can see right now, I'm just kind of scratching the reef, scratching the reef, see if anything gets curious on the body. You see all those blacks, right? We're watching a real far distance. A nice um, Moana Kali swims by. It's far shot, but I got a nice lineup and bam! Nice shot, I've seen them cartwheel. I'm like, yes, I must got them. Perfect shot, far, but I got them. And then when I got to the surface, I was like, what? What? Empty shaft. I, I just couldn't believe it because I know I, I I thought I stoned it, but it's just one of those days, I guess. <laughs> right? We all been there. Okay, so watch this. Line up the shot. It's far shot, but I got him tracking him, I'm tracking him. Look, shaft hits him. Boom! He does a cartwheel. He's done. And then I, I don't I don't know. I don't know if my barb didn't open or my flapper didn't open or anything. I I don't know, but. Couldn't find him, tried to stalk him for a while, tried to see where he held up, but nothing. So then I was like, you know what? I see a nice table boss in here. Can't miss. Let me just get him. <laughs> and I don't know, it's just not my day. <laughs> Have you guys ever had one of those days where it feels like your shaft is bent or you can't hit anything? So <laughs> of course now I'm stuck in the in the rocks. <laughs> Thank god it wasn't deep. But now, now I'm, I'm just, it's just one of those days, man. <laughs> so you just can't hit me. So I decided to switch over to a three prong action and at least get some coles, you know. So that way at least I can do a catch and cook and put food on the table, you know. Because I know I'm going to go home and my kids are going to ask me, Daddy, what did you get? <laughs> so at least I got dinner. So again, uh, you can watch my other videos on kole. So as you know, they're very curious, um, and even if you miss, they'll kind of pop up, pop right back out. So you just wait, and then over here it's kind of shadowy, so I kind of just look for their yellow eye. See him? Hard to see, but he'll pop his head back out, and then chook. Just wait. There you go. Line up a shot, and make sure you try to hit him in the head. You don't want like a gut shot or anything, but like this one. <laughs> But it is what it is, right? So, um, you know, sometimes even when I'm missing with the gun, I'll just switch over to tree prong and I'm pretty deadly with the tree prong. I guess maybe just go back to Hanabara days, right? Of uh, just, you know, this tree prong action. It's sometimes more rewarding and more fun, uh, especially if you're just missing with the gun. So, all right, let me go check this crack out. Oh, let's see if I got one. All right, I have one way in the back, so. Nice. Oh, and also stick to the end. I'm gonna show you how to clean these bad boys. A super easy, awesome way to do it. All right, here you go. So just check the cracks, underneath the ledges. Sometimes it'll be like ala'ihis and 
um, some other reds and stuff like that. Over here is mostly cole, so I just getting just enough, just enough for dinner. Um, again, I, I don't like to pound. I just catch just enough for dinner, uh, just for me and my family. Yeah, that way only catch what you need, you know. So it should be good. All right, gang. Let me show you how to clean like these reef fish, cole, manini, hole, hole, available. All this the quickest, easiest way I ever done it I'm gonna share that with you guys and I wanted to show you how it's done as you can see uh, Kole and a lot of reef fish have a lot of pokies you see how like underneath and on top especially by the tails so what I did was I built this fish holding device which is basically just a cutting board with all these triangles stuck inside and then what I did was I, I screwed the top part with stainless steel screws on top so basically it has two little triangle holes that the fish go into the head and then all you do is take a high pressure hose and you can see all the scales just come flying off. Super fast, super easy, super efficient. So watch, stick the heads in, flip them over, just shoot them down. So I can, I can go through all these fish in a matter of minutes. Just look how simple that is. So super easy. And then now all I do is take a knife, cut right behind the eyes so you don't waste any of the meat and right behind the gills and boom, heads off. Guts are out, and all you do is spray it out, make sure it's clean. Cut a couple slices inside, so that way when you fry it, uh, the oil can penetrate the meat and basically cook it nice and even, even in a nice, nice even cook, nice surface area. All right, so this is where we start off at, and we just salt and pepper it. Uh, I like you kind of go kind of heavy on the salt and pepper. That's just to really flavor the fish, and then I'm gonna use potato starch instead of corn starch because my mom was like hey if you really want an extra crunch on it use potato starch instead of like corn starch because I kind of like to use corn starch but she says oh the potato starch has a lot more crunch to it so all right so I just give it a nice little toss make sure you could do both sides and again I use salt first on the fish to really flavor the fish but also draws out some moisture later on and you're gonna see all this starch uh, really stick to the fish when you so when you fry keeps the oil cleaner it actually makes it crispier and more delicious all right so we're making fish and chips so this is gonna be my chips like just like English style but I'm gonna pre-cook it just salt pepper little vegetable oil toss it together put it in the oven about 350 375 for about 45 minutes I was kind of inspired by um, being a firefighter on Maui they have this place called minute stop the gas station where they sell chicken and fried potato wedges just like that with the beer batter kind of a crust so good so delicious that's why I decided to try to make this so it's basically just one cup all-purpose flour to one egg salt and pepper to, to whatever flavor you want and then you're gonna add about a cup to a cup and a half of beer I just eyeball it you know it ain't rocket science just get those ingredients mixed in add in your beer and of course, what I'm looking for is to make it almost like a pancake batter. So, you know, some people like it. If you want, I like mine a little bit thicker. So that way it's nice and clumpy and it really clings to the potatoes. Um, nice crunch and body. But you could also make it really thin, add more beer, and then it'll be lighter and thinner. Kind of tempura style. So I'm actually, ooh, look at that. Mmm. Lick your screen. Mmm, look at that. So, of course, I do my potato wedges first, and then your fish, or else your potatoes will taste like fish, right? So, look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? It's almost like Lanjiang Silver is kind of deal, right? So, now here comes the kole. So, it's pretty hot, maybe like 400 degrees. So, I want it super crunchy on the outside, but yet still flaky and soft on the inside. When you cook with a higher temp like that, they'll tend to just flash fry the outside, make it crispy where you can eat the tails and everything and of course make sure you guys have a nice cold beverage of your choice whatever you like but <laughs> this is what i like yay you know me yay Jaden. okay you guys want to try it okay so we got um those are like kind of like minute stop chicken so it's like basically beard batter potato wedges and i got the yagara the trumpet fish so like fish and fish and chips so this is my version of fish and chips with mac salad and fried kole and rice. Alright, cheers guys. Mmm, looks good, huh? Mm. Alright, kid approved. <laughs> Hello guys. 
Thank you guys again for watching another episode of On Fire Fishing Hawaii. I hope you guys like the Captain Cook and uh, leave a comment if you, uh, if you guys want to see anything else. Um, Alright guys, remember to fish safe and fish with aloha. Catch you guys on the next one.